Jesus Christ. to bring this announcement this morning this August the 6th is the women's conference it's fill my cup and we're going to have Janet Gregory is going to be our speaker and it's only ten dollars so you can come you can bring a friend or two but we would love to have y'all it's August 6th it's on a Saturday 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. y'all please try and come this is really going to be a blessing and I'm going to be looking Okay, one minute. Let me get everybody on stage. Okay, all you ladies, I'm going to be looking for each one of you to be there. Okay? Thank y'all. Let's all stand together and greet one another.
Wow. Good to see you here this morning. Just a quick reminder about next Sunday. We've got Henry bringing some brisket and some sausage. Uh, well, we need watermelon. I think there's only going to be two watermelons so far and one bucket of ice cream. So uh, if you would please sign up for that. If not, pray about it. Uh, tell somebody else. Sign somebody else up for that. And that way we can have ice cream and watermelon and brisket and sausage, have a great fellowship. Also, some music is going to be brought, but we need you to sign up for that as well. So please be in prayer about next Sunday evening. Yes, I know. It's hot, Steve. You bet. That's what happens in summertime, but we're going to have a cool fellowship. So you pray about that that's going on here. Thank you for your prayers for last week uh, for uh, Charlie Bingham family. Uh, you reached out to them in a very special way, so thank you very much for that. Lots going on. You see that the summer is just about over. I think there's like 20 days until school starts. Oh, my goodness. Can you believe that? Man, that's just crazy. Crazy times going on. But it's happening. Or 28 days. I'm sorry. 28 days. That helps out a lot. And then... Uh, <laughs> And as Myra said, the ladies' uh, uh, conference coming up August the 6th, and, and it's going to be a great time. You'll miss out on a blessing if you don't sign up. Don't let any money stop you. There are scholarships available as well. So thank you for being here this morning. I know that the month's about over, and, and I know it's been flying through, but one thing we can't pass up, and that's prayer. We've got to find time to pray, and that's what we do here at Calvary Baptist every single Sunday, and we invite you in a number of ways. The aisle is open for you to walk down, stand here with me and pray. You're welcome to sit where you're at, but reach out to somebody, put your arm around somebody, pray with them, even if it's their birthday today, right, Raiden? If it's their birthday today, you want to pray especially for people who's having a birthday today, Raiden? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And then lift up Cherie and Ronnie. It's their 50th anniversary, and they're gallivanting around, huh? They're gone to Switzerland or somewhere, I don't know, might be Gomez for something like that. But, but anyways, let's go before the Lord right now in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you that uh, you provide uh, life for us and that you give us breath and that you give us strength to, to honor you today. Lord, we ask that you would be with our country as we are in a turmoil and, and we need your guidance, we need your help, we need your strength. Lord, we ask you to be with Steve as he brings our message today. May we open our hearts to receive it. Lord, we ask you to bless our congregation, the families that are here. Bless those that are, are sick and, and homebound in our church. Lord, we ask you to bless, bless them and the caregivers. Lord, forgive us for we fail you. For ask in Christ's name. Amen. 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 All right, young boys and girls and robots too. Come on. Come on down. Robots, okay, robots gotta be quiet. Here we go. Okay, all right, all right. And here we are. And it's good to have you here. Now, we all know that somebody's having a birthday today, right? And I'm sure he brought birthday cake for everyone today. Maybe not, huh? Well, you know, it is really good to share. I've got something. And since it's Raiden's birthday, here you go, Raiden. You just get a cup of money. There you go, just a cup of money. Now, Raiden can go cheat. Raiden, that's my money. I don't know. It's just, just for show. Okay. Now, Raiden can say, hey, thanks, Steve. That's my money now, and get up and walk away. Or, if he was a real good Christian young man, he could say, hey, guys, y'all want some money? And he could share it. Or he could give it back to me since it's my money. <laughs> but listen to what the Bible says about sharing, okay, what you have. It says, do not forget to do good and to share with others for this such sacrifice is pleasing to God. It's good to share. It's good to give some things that we have to others. Sometimes it might just be time to sit down and talk. Sometimes it might be money. Thank you. It might be money. You know, let's go get a Coke and I'll buy. Have you ever heard somebody say, let's go out to Dairy Queen and get an eye. Let's get a piece of birthday cake and share it with someone. Yeah, it's good to share. Why? Because God is pleased when he knows he's given us a lot of things that we don't keep for ourselves. So I want to encourage you. Maybe today you've got maybe a word of encouragement. Can you anybody share a hug? Yeah, or a handshake? There's a lot of things we can share. Or maybe a happy birthday to Raiden and a, 
on the back side. We yeah. can all share that. All right. uh, no, yeah. I'm not going to do that. Either. Well, let's remember. Let's share with others because it pleases God, okay? All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for these boys and girls and birthday boy that, God, you'll share through them your blessings and they will share with others the blessings you have given them. Let us not be hoarders of the blessings. Let us be showers of what you give us. We ask in your name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let's stand together as we begin our worship. Now I belong to Jesus.
Our Heavenly Father, thank you again for the day and thank you for your blessings that you provide for us. Lord, again, we ask that you'd be with Steve as he brings our message. Lord, hide him behind the cross that he might preach you and you crucified and that you died for our sin. Lord, we ask that uh, you would bless each family here. Lord, we ask that you would also give us open hearts that we might receive what you have for us today. Lord, we ask again for those that, that are here, that their families and their loved ones are cared for. Lord, forgive us where we fail you. For it's in Christ's name, amen. As a lot of you know, I had heart surgery back in March. And uh, because of that, we, uh, or I started thinking a lot about what was going to happen. Uh, at first, I guess I didn't realize they were going to stop my heart. But uh, Donna got a whole lot more worried about it than I did. And uh, she asked me one day what I thought. And uh, I gave her the wrong answer because I said I'm a winner either way. So that brings me to this song. And because of my relationship with Jesus Christ, I could say that. And if you can't say that, then I hope today that there's something that Steve says will make you want to have that relationship with Jesus Christ where you can lay down on the table and not know if you're going to wake up, but you're going to be okay. I used to be so lonesome, I never had a friend. Always looking out for number one. Didn't know where I was going, didn't care where I had been. My life I lived had me on the run. One day Jesus found me and took my sin away. Showed me what I thought I'd never see. He put me in his family and he's with me to this day. Let me tell you what salvation's done for me. I used to be a blind man, but now my vision's clear. Mercy came and drove the shame from me. There's peace of mind with Jesus who drives out every fear. I'm stronger than I thought I'd ever be. I can't tell you why he loves me as bad as I had been. Why I'm worthy of this life of victory. I know I'm not a scholar. Just a sinner saved by grace, but I can tell you what salvation's done for me. One day when life is over, I'll go to my reward. Where heaven waits for those who've been set free. With saints from all the ages in the presence of our Lord. This is what salvation's done for me. 
I used to be a blind man, but now my vision's clear. Mercy came and drove the shame from me. There's peace of mind with Jesus who drives out every fear. I'm stronger than I thought I'd ever be. I can't tell you why he loves me as bad as I had been. Why I'm worthy of this life of victory. I know I'm not a scholar, just a sinner saved by grace, but I can tell you what salvation's done for me. Oh, what salvation's done for me. You know, it kind of says it all. I don't know, since we've been on this journey of mercy, if you've said that lately. Lord, have mercy. Well, good morning, and I hope it is a good morning for you. I hope you've kind of taken time this morning to, to watch the sunrise, to kind of take in a cool breeze. And I know it's hot out there, and I don't know if you've stood out in the, in the heat of a 6 o'clock in the evening breeze and go, Lord, have mercy. But I hope over the next few weeks as we take a journey through the summer about God's mercy that you start saying it more and more, not in that, oh, fed up way, but in the way of, Lord, you're going to have mercy. You know, and again, I've been talking about God's mercy and who has it. It's not a secret, but what do you do with it? But what do you do? I kind of started this morning with birthday Raiden and his cup of money. Oh, I'm glad you didn't keep it. It wasn't your gift. But sometimes we have things that other people need. You know, a lot of times we say, Lord, have mercy when it comes to our family. True? Lord, have mercy if those kids don't settle down. Mercy, mercy me. Maybe you've said it, but, but I also want to tell you this morning, there's a devil out there that wants to unload a bucket of doubt that we serve a merciful God. Because it's hot out there, then God doesn't have any mercy. Because my kids are just tiny tornadoes spinning around, God doesn't have mercy. Because my marriage just seems to be upside down, because my finances are about ready to snap, I, I don't see the mercy that Steve's been talking about. So let me just make this phrase that I've heard it today, and heard it yesterday, heard it last week. In all things, God works. In all things, God works. It might not be the thing you had on your list. I'm sure you didn't plan for cancer to come into your family's life. But in all things, God works. 
And I'm sure you didn't plan for that one sweet little angel that you used to have like this, and now you're like this on him. But in all things, God works. He works with His mercy. Lord, have mercy. Sometimes we say that, and we don't know that what we're invoking. But understand this. We serve a merciful God, not a merciless God. Because if He gave us what we deserve, would any of us be here? No. No. And I know you might polish up that halo and fit it on just perfect, but for the most part, it slips to the side. Because even yesterday, if you've, again, I, I love Lubbock, Texas. I love that it's about 40 minutes away from us. Because, man, that'll cause you to invoke the name of God every time you go up there. Lord, have mercy, these people up here. Woo! We stepped into the little five-star dining establishment called Whataburger yesterday. And so did the town of Lubbock. We walked in there, and there were scads of people. They were everywhere. Of course, you could see the faces on the two little checkout counter. Can, can, can I help you? They were speechless. Yeah, just burger and fries, something simple, just meat, bread, that's good for me, nothing complicated. And then the wait began. You ever been there? And I look at my number, and they're like 39, and I was 40. I'm like, okay, great, they're moving. 42, 40, 38. 40, 45, 40. I'm like, oh, I'm going to have, Lord, have mercy what happened to my food. You've been there. I know you've been there. Let me tell you, just this morning, there's, there's just four simple questions. This might be one of those y'all come back now talks because I don't know if I'll get through all four of them. But I just want to give you a couple of four questions here. That's West Texas math, a couple of four, Okay. You've said it, come on. <laughs> but think about it. And, and think about mercy. First question. How does a heart become merciful? How does a heart become merciful? Second one is this. What is a merciful person like? Let me just take a quick look. Hmm. Hmm. Some people need a little schooling on that. What about this? Should a merciful person always be merciful? That's the third question. And the fourth one is this. Why will only merciful people's people find mercy from God? Four questions that just came as, as God said, Hey, Steve, there's some questions out there in the world. Let's see if we can address some of them. And some of them are very practical. And let's just get to the first one. How does a heart become merciful? If you have your Bible with you, I'm in Matthew chapter 5 this morning. And I know I just got one scripture verse, but I'm going to give you a bonus. Okay? I'm going to give you a bonus. I'm going to give you the Beatitudes. Okay? I've got seven up here, which is the heart of what I'm talking about. But blessed are the poor in spirit. This is in verse 3, chapter 5 of Matthew. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Number seven, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. But verse 7, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. I don't know you. I honestly can't see your heart. I see the exterior of you. I hear your words. I hear your laughter. I hear your sternness and your firmness. I see your boldness when you're bold. But I don't know if you're merciful. Merciful is not an inward. God has given us the, the ability to be merciful. To be merciful. But some of us choose merciless. But think about this. I read you the Beatitudes. I think this is my answer about how does a heart become merciful. I think a heart must be broken first. A heart must be broken first. 
And they can, that, they can be mended and lifted up, and they will be given mercy. Blessed are the merciful, they will be shown mercy. I don't know if you've ever been in trouble. I don't know if you've had that one of those days that, that you looked around and you couldn't find a soul that would be there beside you. You felt you were the only one in the boat. You felt you were the only one on the planet that has ever experienced this. You have accepted the devil's lies that said you are the only one going through this. That is a lie. Because the Lord tells me that I will never leave you nor, forsa- leave you, nor forsake you. Forsake you. Whew. And we think about where we're at. We think about the persecution as a believer in Jesus Christ. And I go back to, do do we truly know what persecution here in West Texas is? No, we don't. No, we don't. Oh, we might get someone to tell us, oh, hush up, I don't want to listen to that. Or we might get someone to peek through the window and then walk away and not answer the door. That's really not persecution. Persecution is when they actually take you to jail, when they actually kill you. Because you're a Christian. That's persecution. But to find the mercy that we're talking about is we actually have it. Like a cup of coins sitting over here. Or somebody walk in with a dozen donuts. And up, up the stairs you go. Lord have mercy. I didn't get a single one. Mercy. Mercy. I wonder what time cake and ice cream is today. But I know I haven't been told. Lord have mercy. When you see it, and again, it comes to, comes to the heart when people say, it, Steve, I, I just don't get it. I see those people prospering. And Steve, they don't even come to church. Steve, they don't even serve the Lord. Steve, what is it? In all things, God works. You might not see it, but in all things, God works. And maybe he's just asking you to show this person, these people, some mercy. Some love of the Lord when they come up and they're hot and they're tired and they're feisty and they're fighting. And you're that cold cup of water that they need. Anybody appreciate some cold water lately? Ooh, yes, I've got that. And man, when it hits, all the way down to the toes it goes. It's refreshing. It's a cool time within the body and the body's telling you, thank you. Because when the body is pouring out sweat that's coming out of us, we're losing all those fluids. We've got to replenish them. Understand what mercy is from God. It is an unending flow from Him to us. Mercy. And folks, I don't know about you, but I need God's mercy every day, not just on Sunday. I need His mercy when I get up on Monday. When I go stumping my toe, and I say that because I've got a nice black toenail, because somebody moved the door frame in the middle of the night. Ow, I'm surprised my neighbors didn't come over and say, I heard an explosion. Oh my goodness, you ever stump a toe and that thing did not move and that toe did? Got a toe that, oh, Ray, where are you at? When your toe hurts, your body hurts. I don't know which about you, but I'm a baby, but my, whoo. But understand this, is, is where we're at, is, is a broken heart, that poverty stricken, and you know, we, we go through verse 3, poor in spirit, you're, you're poverty stricken, you're grieving in your spirit, you're grieving in your soul, and then verse 7 comes up. Verse 7 shows up, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. You know what that's telling me? That one day, if I am merciful, I am going to be shown mercy. I'm going to need somebody's mercy. Here's the worldly phrase. I'm going to need you to cut me some slack. I'm going to need you to get behind me, not kick behind me. That's what mercy is. Mercy is putting on the work gloves, saying, hey, man, I got this. Two hands, four hands, six hands. We got a little work project coming up in the van hut. It's now going to be the picnic hut, but it's really not a picnic hut because it's a mess. So at men's breakfast, while the women are over here in the cool air conditioning, us men are going to be over there cleaning up what used to be a van hut. Now it's going to be a picnic hut, getting some new lights and some some fresh paint and just some freshening up so we can have a, a facility over there that one day have picnics. Well, Lord have mercy, Steve. I just came to eat. Mercy, now you got me working. Well, you know what? Six, eight, twelve hands are better than two. Many hands make light works, whatever phrase you want to say. But, well, Lord have mercy. Steve, I've been working for six days, and now on Saturday, once a month, and I'm like, oh, come on. 
That's what I hear about Sunday, don't you? I don't go to church because it's my only day to rest. That's when I do say, Lord, have mercy. That's when my eyes do roll in the back of my head. Because understand this, I have been spiritually bankrupt in my life. I have been broke down to the ground and my God still showed me mercy. He had never forsaken me. He brought me a cup of cold water through some people and said, Hey, Steve, we'd love for you to come sit with us in church whenever you're ready. Oh, Lord, I don't need church. I don't need church. I didn't know how much I needed church until church people started showing me mercy instead of being merciless on me. Instead of just seeing my sin, they saw me as redeemed. Instead of pulling out what I've been doing, they said, what I can do. They saw the ability within me to become something that I didn't see. I don't know about you, but have you ever been kind of disappointed when you look in the mirror? Not just because this jiggled, but because you just didn't like what you saw. You're like, I'm a better person than this. I'm stronger than this. I'm more encouraging. That Lord, have mercy on me. Let me get back on top instead of being underneath. This is where we're at, church. There's a world out there that's showing merciless acts every day, and the church is accepting it instead of showing mercy. Now, again, do not get me wrong. Mercy is not a sign of weakness. It is not. Mercy is a sign of strength. Because there are some people that need mercy, and you are the only one in their world that will show it to them. When that little waitress is frazzled at the end of her little french fry rope, and she's like, I'm like, hey, man, you're doing a great job. Thank you very much. What did that cost me? A couple seconds in words? Or you could have said, hey, like this one lady came up, you don't have any sweet tea. And there was a line of people, and I could just tell she was thinking, if there was three of me, if there was just three of me, I could get it done. But I'm going to get, she goes, okay, thank you. And as the lady walked away, no sweet tea. (laughs) Golly, gee, merciless. And I'm like, sometimes Christians are like that. We see somebody who's broken, and then we crumble them to pieces. Instead of helping mend them back. How do we show that? How do we show the mending back of people? You know, I've got one story in here. It's Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, starting at verse 10, is where I'm going to go with a little story about mercy. Because the word sinner comes up. And that always gets my attention. What does a sinner look like? Well, how come nobody said? Okay, there's only two sinners in here, me and Kay. <laughs> That's what sinners look like. Sin does not, it's not prejudice. Sin accepts red and yellow, black and white. Young or old, there's no little one too precious not to sin. There's no one... Too old not to sin. But in this story right here in Matthew 9, starting verse 10, while Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many, understand that many tax collectors, what were tax collectors thought of back then? Oh. Oh, that's what scum sat on. Absolutely. They were, they were horrendous people. Many tax collectors, and I love this, and Sinners. Well, if you're the scum of the earth, what scum sits on, how bad is a sinner then? How, how horrible is this? I mean, this guy must have had muck all around him. Many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does the teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Oh, hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who needs a doctor but the sick. Think about that for just a second. Not the healthy who needs a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. I desire mercy. Mercy, not a sacrifice. I don't know about you, but there was some times I have had to go to certain places and sacrifice by going there. You're like, oh, do we have to go over there? Do we really have to go? Come on, tell me. Somebody nod their head and say, I'm with you. Do we really have to go over there? It's a sacrifice. He desires mercy. 
How about the next time you have to go over there, you show that mercy going, hey, and honestly say it's good to see you. Because you know that clock's going to tick, time's going to go by, and you're going to say adios and saddle up and ride back home. And you think about this. I, God taught me mercy this week. I, I was helping out a law enforcement officer who needed a minister to perform a wedding ceremony. And man, I don't know about you, but it's a little warm outside at 6 o'clock. And that's where the wedding was outside. And I was just standing there with this little dripping. You know, Wayne, you got me? It's hot. And I literally said to myself, Lord, have mercy. Would some, would some way, Lord, would you just make lighten me up? I am just... This is what happened when I said, Lord, just lighten me up. I'm at the Fulford barn. And I'm standing behind the tree hiding to get the signal from the guy to walk up. And there's two squirrels fighting. I, I, this is, I can't make this up. There are two squirrels fighting. And, just, and I'm, I'm just enthralled. And about that time, I, I honestly, one of them headbutts the other. And out of the tree it goes and takes a 20-foot dive to the ground. Bam! And it perked up and literally it went, and went like this and looked at me. And I'm like... <laughs> and it, it went up the tree and went off the farthest branch it could away from that other squirrel. I'm like, God, I couldn't have made this up if I wanted to. Thank you, Lord, for lightening it up a little bit. And the Lord says, I, I am just not this ironclad God who, who throws down lightning bolts of punishment on people. There are times in our lives that just a lighthearted event just kind of calms the soul. When people are in trouble, when people are heavy laden, when people are burdened, He's got mercy to bring those events that gives a little bit of lightheartedness. Think about that, a little bit of lightheartedness. Why do these teachers eat? Why does the teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Those are, think about that. They're all sick. We're all sick. We all needed a physician. We all needed a doctor. But I desire mercy. Church, let me just get a couple minutes of honesty, real heart to heart with you. This world is becoming more hard hearted than I have ever seen in my long, long, long life. Hard hearted, bitter. Angry, downright, nasty, mad. And you know who's in this world? Christians. We are not called to make a point and to point down. We are called to make a difference. We are called to make a difference in people's lives. And maybe it's through the love of God and the mercy of His Son, Jesus Christ, that He has shown us on that cross. And there's not a one that won't say amen to that. He's shown us mercy through walking up to that cross, through taking it on his shoulder, through the whipping and the beating and took every one of our sins. What has happened to our mercy? Why is it sometimes we just soon duck our head and turn it then walk over there and say, hey, I, I, I don't have a cup full of money, but what I do got is a prayer for you in the name of Jesus. Who, who doesn't need a prayer? Who doesn't need a cup of cold water, a good spiritual uplifting in this hard summer? Then our farmers, I, I see the crop literally burning to the ground out there. I see those farmers, they've got to be saying, Lord, oh man, Lord, have mercy. But I see people's impatience expounding exponentially, growing rapidly, where Christians should become a little more tolerant of a world that needs a lot of Jesus. And we, through His mercy, have it. When I said at the very beginning, who has it? We do. I believe we are the brokenhearted who have been mended. We have that mercy. What are you going to do with it? Here, you can have that, you can have that cup of money, but I'm going to take it back because it's mine. There's enough to share, but if I share, then I won't have that much money. You been there? I got three, but if I give you one, then I only have two. We, we've got to find time to show mercy. It's great that somebody says, hey man, put so-and-so on the prayer list. Gotcha. Wrote it down. But a merciful person says, and by the way, we're praying right now. Let's stop what we're doing. Let's pull the vehicle over. Let's shut off the world and go, you know what, you need a prayer right now. That's mercy. That's mercy, and that's what we need. 
those broken hearted ones who are out there need to be mended just like you were mended. Because the opposite of mercy is sacrifice. And Jesus said, I don't need your sacrifice, I need your mercy. Hosea 6.6 6, is God, excuse me, quote from Hosea 6.6, 6, I desire mercy, not sacrifices. But where God accuses the people that their love is like the dew on the grass in Hosea. Like the dew on the grass. It is there for a brief morning, an hour maybe, and then, I made this word big, gone. Sometimes our mercy is there for just like the dew in the morning. We haven't even seen that lately, but you remember what it was. And then gone. Not temporarily, not just, it said gone. And all that is left is empty form of burnt offerings. I think sometimes we think it's acceptable. Well, they're doing it. Well, they're that way. And I always go back, if somebody poked a stick in their eye, would you line up to do it? Well, no, Steve, that's ridiculous. Well, just because they're being merciless, does that give you the right to be merciless as well? Blessed are the merciful. He's calling out those who have the mercy for they will be shown, meaning they are going to be needing his mercy. Jesus saw the sinners were sick. And they needed a physician. There's probably not a person here in his house this morning that can't think of one person that needs a little bit of a break cut. A little bit of a lift up. A hand and not a hand out. And yet why aren't we? In just a few weeks we've got that biker rally that everybody cringes and turns their nose up. But you know what? We need to show them some mercy. Not Why are you supporting them? Because as Jesus said, I came for all, all, and and we profess to be the embodiment of Jesus Christ, and we profess to be his servants, that's where we need to be, is out serving. So on August the 13th, in the cool of the morning, there's going to be whoever out there. Whoever, I don't know who whoever is, but whoever shows up will have the mercy of the Lord to show, the mercy I think about our brothers and sisters in blue who have been shown little mercy lately. They've been attacked, they've been ridiculed, they've been spit on, they've been yelled at. The American flag has been stomped on and burnt. God bless America. I tell you, because it's the land of our freedom, because of our brave men and women. And if you don't like it, leave. Amen. But you know what? They won't. Why? Why? Because they know anywhere else on this planet, they'll never get the freedom that they have here. Anywhere outside the love of God, you'll never be shown the mercy of God like you're shown right now inside His love. Outside of His love. It's like picturing the umbrella. Under the umbrella is God's protection and mercy. The umbrella does no good like this. It only does good when you're under the protection and mercy of God. And that's where we need to be at. The Pharisees were there, and they saw the opportunity. I don't know about you, but there are some people who take those opportunities to pounce on the oopses. Even this morning, as I stumbled through my words, well, he was off his game. Steve didn't have his, his act together. And Lord, have mercy. I know a couple of you might have tripped over your tongue a time or two. I'm just saying. And it sure is good to have somebody go, man, that's, that's okay, I do that too. Sure. Or you might have forgotten something. You might have left something like, oh, man, I, you're getting old. Getting old. And I just got forgetful today. How about a little mercy to our brothers and sisters right inside the house of the Lord? How about getting off that perch and ready to pounce and getting next to that person who needs just a, an arm around him? Say, hey, man, I love you. It's tough out there, but never forget you're not alone. That's the mercy of the Lord that we are supposed to show and share every day. Because blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Think about where you're at right now. Think about the the times that you needed God's mercy. And all of a sudden, that cool breeze came. And all of a sudden, that cup of cold water came. Or all of a sudden, that out of nowhere phone call, card in the mail came. And you're like, wow, what a coincidence. 
I was just asking the Lord for mercy. And what a coincidence. You know, I know some of y'all are blessed by being grandparents. Some of you have those little ones that are just mobile, who are not mobile. We just had to send ours back this morning. Tough, tough. He had to go back home. You know, it, it, it's just one of those times that we see how fast life grows. It's just quick. It's in a blink of an eye. Right now in the middle of it, you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm never going to make it through this. And the next thing you know, they're up. They're mobile. The next thing you know, they're gone. And where did it go? It's that point in time right there that that little living sponge needs you to pour some mercy into them. Some God-appointed, God-anointed mercy in them so they won't leave bitter and harsh and upset. Yes, there are times you have to have the rod of discipline. But you, your staff as well that draws them close for protection. Lord, have mercy on us if we stop showing mercy to a merciless world. But Steve, I know I'm in it for when it comes. But Steve, you just don't know. Gosh, I do know. I absolutely do know. Because I don't wear a robe, and I don't have a crown, and I don't have a scepter, and I don't, I don't walk out there and go, oh, there's Reverend Steve Carter. I'm just Steve out those doors as I'm standing right here. I'm just a servant with you, not a servant over you. And yet there are those people out there that need to see that we are who we say we are. If you're sick and tired of it, then here's how you get me to stop saying it. Let's go and serve. Let's go and be servants. Let's go and show mercy. Let's go even this day as we walk out the doors through, through the, into the world through our Sunday school classes who do and do not have donuts. And let's show some mercy. Let's say, hey, man, how are you doing, man? It's good to see you. Let's make a phone call this week. Let's start inviting people to church. Do you remember, are you old enough to remember that on Sunday was the focal point of the community was church? People desired to come and, and, to, and to see and to fellowship and hang around because they know they wouldn't see him again for six to seven days if you didn't miss out on Wednesday. Just real quick, how many of you here this morning haven't seen someone since last Sunday? There's a lot of us. This is the only time we see. And yet a lot of times we're like, okay. I've got to get, gotta get to class. I've got to get here. I've got to go. How about showing some mercy and some peace and some love real quick and just, just say, hey, it's good to see you. I'm glad you came. Oh, I might step in and I'm not going to go too long because I know we got Sunday school. And Lord, have mercy if we're late. That's right. Because a lot of times this is God. And it's my God at times because, as I said at the wedding this, this weekend that I had, it started late. And I was pacing. I was impatient. But you know what I wasn't? I wasn't merciless because I was standing behind that tree. And I was like, okay, Lord, it's not about me. For whatever reason, this is going off late. And you're going to reveal to me why later? But these people need to see a person who's calm and at peace. I wonder if they see that in you. Are you at calm and at peace in the, in the middle of the turmoil that's in your life? Maybe it's work. Maybe you are fed up. I, I'm done. I can't stand them or him or her or whatever. Hey, man, how about, how about some mercy? Maybe it's your marriage. Well, I tell you, I, I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I just... You know what? Maybe a little more mercy. Maybe it's the kids. Maybe it's the kids. You can name it on whatever. I, I didn't raise them that way. They got a mind of their own. Yes, they do. But you know what? They need to see some mercy. They need to see some genuine love of God coming from you. I didn't get to four questions. I only got to one. Maybe you'll have to come back next week. But maybe this one is the one you need to hear more than any of the other ones. Who has mercy? Those who have been broken. Those who have been shown mercy. And I think you're here this morning. You have the mercy of God within you. But there's a devil out there that wants to unload a bucket of bitterness over you. Understand this. No matter where you're at, health, finances, relational, in all things, God's at work. In all things. Would you stand with me, please? Father, we come before you this morning.
and you are a merciful God. And we might not see you working as instantaneously as we want to see you working in the health and the relationship and finances that we're in a mess over. Father, your mercy is at work. For you're a merciful God. This morning, Father, as we stand in the coolness of your house with lights on and comfortable pews, it's your mercy that has allowed this. For there are others out in the heat who have nothing. God, let us not roll by. Let us find the mercy within us that you've given us to show and share with others. Even this morning, Father, there might be that person right here this morning who feels that they are the only one going down that road alone. Let them feel your presence. Maybe it's just an arm or a prayer or a card or a call. Father, we have been called the merciful ones. Let us now show mercy. So, Lord, speak to us this morning. The aisles are open. The altar is clear. Let us move closer to you than we've ever been, Father, as you show more mercy on us than we deserve. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As we stand together and join hands and sing our uh, departing song, I want to thank Jan for coming and taking the time to drive over early this morning and be with us. It's, it's been a pleasure. It really has. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought 